When people think about Chinese medicine, they often think about the mystical and the esoteric. People tend to be obsessed with the idea of energy or qigong healing or these alchemical Taoist practices that people do to unlock certain energy circuits in the body. But I think day to day, Chinese medicine is a lot more pragmatic than people think. And of course, there are many types and many branches. But in this video, I thought I would share three practical ways to increase your amount of energy or qi in the body every day. Hey, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, author of the health book Master of the Day and doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So before we jump into this video here today, two very important links right below the video. The first is if you would like to become a patient of mine in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine, you can reach out to my private practice right below this video. And the second is for a free guide and a weekly video newsletter for daily rituals that can potentially help you add years to your life with Chinese medicine. So I'll be candid. I don't necessarily believe that qi is a certain kind of life force energy. To be honest, I don't really know what it is, but I do know that there is a certain series of practices you can do. And in terms of Chinese medicine diagnostics, there are certain diagnostics we can use that your traditional doctor cannot do that will determine basically how much vitality you have. And in some ways it shouldn't be rocket science, right? Someone who's exhausted is probably has less energy. I mean, energy in the colloquial everyday sense but also less qi energy in the everyday sense. Then someone who's super energized, they have that bright look in their eye, you can feel it, right? It's the little kid versus the old person. It's not rocket science who has more energy. In the everyday sense of energy, like someone who is energetic, I think there are three practices you can do, and I thought I would share them just from a Chinese medicine perspective. So practice number one is literally qi gong, which means qi work. These days, the idea of breath work is very trendy. I live in Los Angeles. Californians are all about it. Wim Hof, it's a very common and popular practice people do these days. But qigong literally means qi or breath work. And so if you wanted to use that interchangeably, it is one and the same in Chinese medicine. There's a saying that the lung is the master of qi. And I think this is really important because even physiologically, if you're having a stressed out day and you are in not a good state, the fastest way, you know, bar putting a Xanax in your body, the fastest way to change your state is by changing your breathing. So all ancient cultures were tapped into this, the yogis being a very famous example of doing these intense breath practices, but that also existed all over Asia. And in China, one of them was Qigong. You commonly see this in Taoism. Now in Qigong, not only are there myriad kinds of breathing exercises that range from normal breathing that's just prolonged, to reverse breathing, where you actually, rather than inhale, exhale, creating natural movements with the lower belly, you actually create the opposite movement. There are breath holds. There are even breath holds where you clench the perineum, your groin, suck in the lower belly, and swallow, and it generates a kind of pressure in the lower abdomen, said to increase the amount of qi storage in the dantian, supposedly one of the lower energy centers just below the belly button. So there are all kinds of methods of increasing your personal energy. I wanna start though, just from a day-to-day -day sense. Qigong in particular, in some ways is synonymous with exercise. So I would say a lot of the time, the patients that I notice are the most vital as they age are exercisers, without exception. They are people who regularly exercise, that continue to exercise, who are the most vital, have the strongest pulses and the healthiest pulses I feel in my clinic as they age in their 80s. Now, Qigong has a certain advantage, which is that Qigong fuses breathing, postures, and typically visualization. And the difference though with Qigong and exercise is that it is exercise, fundamentally it's cardiovascular exercise, so it will have the same benefits, but it's low impact, so it won't harm the joints, which is a major drawback of traditional exercise and traditional sports, which can be really hard on the joints. And you tend to see people that exercise a lot who by middle age tend to have joint issues, or if they overtrain a lot, need joint replacements because they've damaged uh, their joints. So the benefit of Qigong is that number one, it's meditation, breathing exercises, meets physical exercise. So it's one part meditation, one part physical exercise. The third benefit is that it doesn't harm the joints. So it's low impact. Now, a final saying about Qigong. One thing I've noticed as someone who is not able to nap, it must be a genetic trait. I've never been able to, to physically nap in my life. I find that 20 to 30 minutes of Qigong on the days where I am absolute toast is able to replace a nap for me, to significantly change me from being dead to 
okay, I can get through the rest of the day. So it's worth trying. Now, the second way to improve your chi or also improve your energy from a day-to-day, -day, everyday sense is formulas. So I specialize in internal medicine and Chinese herbs. And there are certain herbs we use to boost the chi or the yang, basically the functioning, the vitality as a concept of the body. Famous herbs like ginseng are said to boost the chi, but there are hundreds of herbs that increase the functioning of the body and will give you more energy. Other herbs like guizhi, the medicinal grade cinnamon twig, fuzi, which is aconite, and for some people just baiju fuling, herbs that regulate the digestive functioning, will improve the chi and the energy of the body. So for some people, just giving them formulas that work on regulating their digestion will improve their energy to the point where it's night and day difference for them. And I didn't necessarily give them a tonic herb. You know, tonic herbs are very overprescribed in Chinese medicine, but when you improve often the functioning of the weak link, you can improve the person's energy in a big way. The third way to boost your chi and or your energy is rest. Now I know this is obvious, but there's a saying in Chinese medicine and I wish I could find the original saying, but one of my mentors said, when people are really taxed and really ill, you have to close the doors and shut the windows. And what that means is that you are minimizing all energy expenditure. You're not going out with your friends and doing tequila shots. You're not staying out after midnight. You're not doing intense CrossFit workouts or hot yoga five days a week. You're closing off all these energy expenditures that you're losing your resources from. You're not overworking. You're not saying yes to things you mean no to. You're avoiding those friends that are draining or those commitments. And in general, this idea of shutting the windows, closing the doors means shutting off these areas where you're leaking, plugging these kinds of energy leaks. And this can come from many different things for people. For some people, it's their diet. For some people, they're overcommitting themselves. For some people, it's the staying out late every night. And for other people, it's something different. But this idea of you can increase your energy and your resources by thinking about where do you need to shut the windows and close the doors so that you can go into a deep winter hibernation mode to regain your energy and rebuild again. Because if you're frittering it away all day with all the activities of life, even just scrolling through Instagram, even though that is rest, that does not have the same healing effect in your nervous system that sitting out in a park and reading a book or just looking at the dogs play or looking at the clouds has. They're not the same. So nervous system activity is still using your yang. It's using your chi, it's using your resources. So close the windows, shut the doors, and rest. Those are three ways you can improve your chi or improve your energy in an everyday sense to feel more energized. Again, before you guys go, info to reach out on becoming a patient below, and I have two other related videos for you right there.